Combination is a mathematical technique that determines the number of possible arrangements in a collection of items where the order of selection does not matter. Remember that we talked about previously about permutation. So we will be now learning what's the difference between permutation and combination. So as said in permutation, order does matter, while in combination, order does not matter. For example, in permutation, we are dealing with the number 7 and 9. If we are to arrange this, we can have the number 79 or the number 97. So these are considered two different sets since 79 is different from 97. Even if they both, both contain 7 and 9, these are two different sets. While in combination, order does not matter. Example, we are dealing with fried chicken and spaghetti. If we are to arrange this, Example, the first person ordered spaghetti followed by a chicken, while the second person ordered chicken then followed by a spaghetti. Does those two persons have different orders? The answer is no. Both of them have the same order. So, both of these counts as one because it doesn't make any differences. So, this is what combination is. Order doesn't matter while in permutation, order does matter. A different arrangement creates a different set. But in the combination, different arrangement doesn't make a different set. So whenever that we are dealing with the problems involving combination, we are to use the formula the combination of n taken r at a time is equal to n factorial over r factorial times n minus r quantity factorial. Where in n, as we all know, represents the number of elements present on the given problem and r represents the number of elements to be taken or to be used. For example, a fruit basket contains apple, grapes, banana, peaches, melon, and papaya. How many ways can you make a salad if you are to use just four different kinds? So whenever that we are making salad, order doesn't matter, of course. So therefore, this falls under combination. So we are to use this formula. So based on our problem, how many elements are involved? So upon counting, so we do have apple, 1, followed by grapes, 2, banana, 3, peaches, 4, melon, 5, and papaya, 6. So we do have 6 elements present in our problem. So our n is 6. And what is r? r means the elements to be taken or to be used. So we are asked to make a salad containing just only 4 different kinds. So our r is said to be 4. So transforming this into factorial notation, so our n becomes 6 factorial divided by 4 factorial for our r, n becomes 6 as well, and r becomes 4. In writing our equation, so we do have now the combination of 6 taken, 4 equals 6 factorial over 4 factorial times 6 minus 4 quantity factorial. For the simplifying the terms inside the quantity, so which is 6 minus 4, so that gives us 2 factorial. So we do have now 6 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 2 factorial. So we may simplify this factorial, which is 6 factorial, so which is equivalent to 720, while 4 factorial is 24, and 2 factorial is said to be 2. Next thing, we first simplify or multiply 24 times 2, that gives us 48, so giving us 720 divided by 48. So, upon proper division, 720 divided by 48. So, therefore, the answer to the problem is 15. So, therefore, there are 15 ways for us to make a salad if we're going to use just only 4 kinds from the given sets. Another example. If there are 12 teams in a basketball tournament and each team must play every other team in the eliminations, how many elimination games will be there? So if we do have team A versus team B, so it is not different if we do have team B versus team A. So that's why this problem falls under combination as well. Order doesn't matter. Using the same formula, so N is the number of elements. Obviously, we do have 12 teams dealing with. So the question is, what is our R? R is the number of elements to be taken or to be used. Since we are aware of basketball and there are just only two teams, teams playing to each other, therefore our R is 2. Since there are just only two teams playing with each other. 
So our n becomes 12, r becomes 2, n becomes 12 as well, r becomes 2. We're writing our equation, combination of 12 taken 2 equals 12 factorial over 12, fa 2 factorial rather, times 12 minus 2 quantity factorial. Again, simplifying the denominator part which is 12 minus 2, the answer is 10. So we do have now 12 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 10 factorial. Simplifying all of these factorials, so for the 12 factorial, that gives us 479,000,600. Then for 2 factorial, 1 simplified, that is 2. Because 2 factorial means 2 times 1. And for 10 factorial, that is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That gives us 3,628,800. So just like what we did on the first one, on the first example, we multiply the, the simplify the denominator part, which is 2 times 3, 6, 2, 8, 800, making our equation transform into 1,600 divided by 7,257,600. So upon proper division, therefore the answer to our problem is 66. Therefore, there are 66 elimination games that can be made out of these 12 teams. Now, in case that there are multiple sets of objects from the problem, we add the fundamental counting principle to solve it. What is fundamental counting principle? The fundamental counting principle or the FCT states that if there are P ways to do one thing and Q ways to do another thing, then there are p times q ways to do both things. So, what does this mean? So, let's have example for this one. Example. The school canteen offers the following varieties for lunch. For the rice, they offer two kinds, plain rice and fried rice. For the main dish, it offers adobo, menudo, fried chicken, fried fish, and tinola. For the side dish, it offers tokwat baboy, Kilawin, Achara, Lumpia. And for the beverage, it offers soft drinks, iced tea, and pineapple juice. The question now is, if you are to choose one kind of rice, two main dishes, two side dishes, and one beverage, how many possible options do you have? So to answer this, we are going to compute. For, we are going to have four computations for this. So in terms of the rice, for the main dish, for the side dish and for the beverage. For the rice, since we do have two kinds of rice present on our menu, and from these two kinds, we are just only to pick just only one. So therefore, we will have the combination of two, pick and one. For the main dish, we do have five kinds of main dish, and out of these five kinds, we are just only asked to pick two main dishes. So, this will become combination of 5 taken 2 at a time. For the side dish, we do have 1, 2, 3, 4. We do have 4 kinds of side dishes here. And we are asked just only to pick 2 for out of this. So, we're going to have combination of 4 taken 2. While for the beverage, we do have 3 classifications of drinks, iced tea and pineapple. And we are just only to pick 1. So, it will become combination of 4. 3 rather, combination of 3 taken 1. So let us now convert all of this notation into factorial notation. So remember for us to convert this into factorial notation, so we follow this notation. So to be converted into n factorial over r factorial times n minus r quantity factorial. So for the rise, so we do have combination of 2 taken 1. So here, using this notation, so our n becomes 2, r becomes 1, n becomes 2, r becomes 1. So therefore, we will be having this notation, 2 factorial over 1 factorial times 2 minus 1 quantity factorial. Next thing, we simplify the denominator, the terms inside the quantity, which is 2 minus 1. And the answer is 1 factorial, making it 1 factorial. So 2 factorial divided by 1 factorial times 1 factorial. So here, this will give us the answer of 2. For the next one, so we do have for the main dishes. So for the main dish, so our n now becomes 5. 
which is combination of 5 taken 2, R becomes 2 and becomes 5, R becomes 2. So, writing it properly, so we do have now 5 factorial over 2 factorial times 5 minus 2 quantity factorial. Simplifying the terms inside the quantity, 5 minus 2, the answer is 3. So, making it 3 factorial. So, we do have now here 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 3 factorial. So, simplifying this part, so this will give us 10 upon computing properly. Next thing, for the side dish, so combination of 4 taken 2 at a time. So, this time, our n now will become 4, r becomes 2 n becomes 4, r becomes 2. So, we do have here now 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 4 minus 2 quantity factorial. Simplifying 4 minus 2, so the answer is 2, making it 2 factorial. So, we have now 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 2 factorial. So, upon computing this properly, so we will get now 6 as the answer for this. And for the last one, for the beverage, so, combination of 3 taken 1, so which means our n now here becomes 3, r becomes 1, n becomes 3, r becomes 1. Therefore, we do have now 3 factorial divided by 1 factorial times 3 minus 1 quantity factorial. Simplifying 3 minus 1, that gives us 2. So, we do have now 3 factorial divided by 1 factorial times 2 factorial. So, upon simplifying this further, so this will give us the answer of 3. So, this is not yet the answer to our problem. So, how many options can be made? So, since we do have now 4 different sets, so to find the answer completely, so we apply now the fundamental counting principle. So, fundamental counting principle is just only a matter of multiplying the results for each set. So, we are going to multiply 2 times 10 times 6 times 3 which are the results coming from our rice, main dish, side dish, and beverage. So, upon multiplying this properly, so therefore, the answer to our problem is 360. So, there are 360 options that we can make if we are just only to pick one rice out of those two kinds, uh, two main dish out of those five kinds, two side dishes out of those four kinds, and one beverage out of those three kinds. So, this is how the fundamental Counting principle works in dealing with problems containing multiple sets. So, hope you understand. Thank you for watching. See you next time.